Hi, Helen. We'll start this again, shall we? As we're, as we're two minutes into the podcast and uh, I got a delivery come to my door. How are you? Are you all right? I'm good. I hope you're good too. I'm really well. I'm really well. Um, I, I, I'm a big fan of your your little TikTok channel. Um, Thanks, and you, you've been in trouble recently on TikTok. You've got an account warning the same as me, haven't you? Because yeah. you, you talk truth. Tell, tell me about that. Well, it's both accounts have a warning on them. But every time I um, mention Zionism or Palestine or Israel, they're queuing up to report me. There are organised trolls that follow us all and report us en masse. Yeah, I, I do a lot of, um, or I have done a lot of videos on TikTok about um, about Israel and, and the, the, the problems over there and the, the, the crimes they're committing. And every time... It, my my every time I do a video, the video gets taken down um, because it's been reported, mass reported. Many times it gets put put back up, but I'm in the situation now where I've been reported so many times. Even if a, a video does get reinstated, I still end up with a seven day ban. Is that the sort of stuff that you're seeing as well? I'm on a back to back one. I got I got back my um, posting rights and commenting rights um, four days ago. And then the next minute, I was back on another seven-day ban. It's um, it's really not fair, is it? Because you you you, I mean, you're, it's it's technical. The tech companies squashing freedom of speech because there's nothing really that you're saying that's that's you know wrong or or factually incorrect, is there? No, I'm just saying things that the mainstream media aren't allowed to say. Um, the BBC isn't even allowed to say the word Palestine. So we're that's getting really, that's that's really really worrying. It, it um you you talk a lot about Zionism on your on, on your channel. Why is that? Where, where does this come from? Because it's a to me it's a cult of wealth. Their main aim is to keep the rich rich and to have a white space in the Middle East. And Zionism has got very long tentacles that reach into governments all over the world. And that's where you hear Biden saying, I'm a proud Zionist. He's the only one that's saying it out loud though. And um, the problem is there's too much control from that particular group that the entire world is getting brainwashed by the same things they brainwashed the people with in Israel. Do you get you do get the the anti-semite label oh all the time which is why i've done videos explaining what is what semite means that there are over a dozen semitic languages and hebrew is only one of them um it includes arabic aramaic and even maltese um amongst the throng of languages that come under semitism um unfortunately zionism have hijacked the words anti and semitism put together to um, mean anti-Zionism when the two things are not inexorably linked. And if you're being Islamophobic, you're being anti-Semitic too. But people don't want to hear that. No, because Palestinians are, of course, Semites. Um, yes. Do you know the history? Do you know how good your history on Zionism and where it's born from, that sort of thing? Are you, are you aware well, of what? In, in the late 19th century, Theodore Herzl had an idea to make a land for the Jews, obviously. Who, was who, a, do you know who, who was he, Herzl? I've heard his name a lot. He was an atheist who had an idea and began what I would call a cult. Um, the cult of Zionism was to find a land just for the Jews. And obviously at that time, the, the um, anti-Jew behaviour was really getting going in Britain and the rest of the world. There was a lot of hatred before we even got anywhere near World War II. It existed back in. I can understand why he felt that um, he needed something, but the point was he went about it all the wrong way. And his ideas, he was offered several different lands, including land in Uganda, and refused it and held out for Palestine. He died before Palestine was chosen. But um, I can't remember the names of the men that came after, but they really pushed for it, which brought out the Stern Gang, which is a terrorist group that was trying to blow up British soldiers in Palestine. It was a way of saying, we want control of this land. 
and then Britain gave it to them. Yeah, Britain ended up with the territory that, that we call Palestine as a result of the end of World War One and the fall of the Ottoman Empire. Is that correct? Yes. And some politician here, I've forgotten his name now, sort of like handed over Palestine to um, for, for a homeland for the Jews. I've forgotten the name of the, the government. Balfour, yeah, yeah. The, the, um, and that's where it come from. And there's been problems in the area ever since, to say the least, isn't it? Le least, isn't it? The, um, we, you know, you got the Nakba in, in 1948, where was it nearly a million Palestinians were, were just forced out of their homes? Is that correct? Yes, they were forced out to places all around the Levant and North Africa. And, um, and many of their families are still there, still in exile, as it were, and not allowed to come home. There's no, no right of return for them. They can't return to that land that their no. parents and grandparents lived on. Meanwhile, if you're Jewish, you can go to those lands and, and basically eject a Palestinian family and settle there, can't you, even if you've only, is that correct? You only have to be Jewish to have a right to return to Israel. Um, the right to return is badly worded because these European Jews never were in the Levant. Their um, ancestry has nothing to do with that area, but um, they're allowed to return um, just by being Jewish. Now, obviously, if we, if we, <laughs> It, it, it's really when I first started doing doing my channel, my YouTube channel uh, on the news, I was very wary of talking about the situation in Israel. And to be quite honest, Helen, I was scared. I was yeah. scared to talk about it because I knew that one tiny slip where I, I realized this very early on, one tiny slip where you you say the word Jewish instead of Israeli. And yeah. all of a sudden, then there's there's the weapon to bash you over the head and call you an anti-Semite. And I know that there's there's lots of little little ways that that people are led down a garden path to do this. And we've seen this with prominent people who were um, who get in debates with people, and before you know it, they've said something. Ah, oh, you're anti-Semite, and they're kicked out of the Labour Party. That sort of thing. Um, and it's really scary to talk about because um, you don't want to be called a racist. And to be anti-Zionist um, is not to be anti-racist, is it? And these two things are separate. No, um, the problem is that Zionism has hijacked Judaism to use it as a way to um, make sure they don't get the negativity. So whereas I'm anti-Zionist, they, for many years, have been saying that Zionism and Judaism are the same thing. Until this last few days when a certain Mr. Biden went and said, you don't have to be Jewish to be Zionist. Well, we knew that, but he's broken their rhetoric by accident. So they all have to agree with him. So maybe we'll see, um, I, we probably won't, but we could see a shift of people not calling you anti-Semitic for being anti-Zionistic because Biden's messed up their rhetoric in the last few days. Yeah, but, but to be anti-Zionist, that's, I mean, how can they call that racism? That's just a, a, a guy's a, a vision. Of, I mean, of... Yeah, I mean, Zionism is inherently racist anyway. It, um, the whole ethos of having a base in the Middle East has never been about um, the ethnic people that come from that area. It has all been about when in and people from outside the area it, it it they've used judaism to use their their um vulnerabilities to mean they can say what they like and then if you say anything oh you're an anti-semite um without even bothering to teach the people what a semite is they're just told that that jews are semites and if you're horrible to them you're anti-semite um i'm not scared of that because I've been doing this um, since I was doing it on Twitter for a good few years before I did, even got onto TikTok. And um, yeah, you get a lot of people that will share your comments on Twitter and go, look at this anti-Semite. I've even been putting a list on Twitter of neo-Nazis and anti-Semites. You're, you're on a list, did you say? Sorry, cut out yeah. a little bit. 
I got uh, a uh, list on Twitter of neo Nazis and anti Semites. Where, where, who, who are making these lists? Who are, who are complaining about you? Are, are these are they trolls, just mini, misinformed people, or do you think yeah, they're like yeah, it's more I, nefarious it, than that? Yeah, it's a mixture of uh, ill informed and um, very brazen Zionists who want to cut you down at every step. I'm wondering whether there's like a basement in Tel Aviv somewhere where people have, uh, are operating 50 or 60 social media accounts just out there trying to muddy the waters. I know, I mean, it's, this is not been me being, you know, right, terrible towards, towards Israel or anything. We've got those uh, troll farms ourselves with the 77th Brigade up in the north, you know, so every country has them. Um, but I, I'm wondering whether, the, whether, you know, these trolls that you speak of, these people who are... Um, who are uh, uh, mass reporting your videos whenever you talk about this. I'm wondering whether they're actually, you know, actual normal people like you and I with an account or whether they're, whether they're people from the IDF or whatever it is operating 50 or 100 social media accounts from a basement in Tel Aviv, in which yes. case, in which case, isn't there some way that these tech companies could fight back against that? Or is it in their interest to keep that going? The owners of tech Com companies are very rich and they would benefit from Zionism's protection. Also, there are, uh, the IDF employ some of their soldiers and some of their cadets to sit on computers all day and watch us and jump on us. Also, they have organized WhatsApp groups. There are definitely IDF groups of paid Zionists. We know they exist, they've shown photos of them. Um, but the everyday Zionist, um, they have a WhatsApp group where they all get together and have a good little chat about who they're going to um, target next. And there's certain of us that get targeted regularly, like all the time. I think it was engineer Leah who ended up on one of their WhatsApp groups and she was listening in to what they were saying and who they were targeting. It, it's very organized, whereas we're not an organized group. We just do it from our hearts. Yeah, would, um, you mentioned something about, yeah, before we were rudely interrupted and my, my delivery came, you mentioned something about your father was in the new Merchant Navy and that's why you, why you got into this. Yeah, my granddad was in the Merchant Navy during the war. And obviously they'd take goods from different parts of the world and they'd get oranges from Yaffa. And um, he, this obviously before Israel even existed, he had fallen in love with it, the whole place. And so I got a lot of tales about it as a child, because grandparents tend to talk about what went on in the war. And um, yeah, he used to tell me all the wonderful things about the people and everything was quite modern and the port was fabulous. And, um, but you will get stories from Zionists telling you that it was a desert and there were no buildings, no nothing, ignoring the fact they had an airport, railway stations and their own currency. It okay. was a thriving nation. Um, but the Zionist thing is to say that it was a desert and nobody was there. Um, is this kind of why, I, it, like, the, the the starting of it and, and the origins of, of Israel, do you think this is why the UK, you mentioned the BBC won't talk about, you know, won't even mention Palestine. Do you think this is why there is this policy of it that the UK feel responsible for it and therefore they're just trying to turn the blind eye to any crimes that are going on over there? I honestly think the mainstream media is Zionist heavy, and that's why we don't get the stories. We will only hear about things Hamas have done wrong, whereas you won't hear about what Israel's done wrong. Um, when Shireen Abu Akleh was murdered, they said a journalist died. <laughs> yeah, I know. Killed. She just died. She died of natural causes after walking into the path of an IDF bullet that was just minding yeah. her own business. <laughs> Dental sniping they seem to be able to do with their perfect precision sights. You mentioned you mentioned um, Joe Biden, um, mm. the, the, the president who's off the back of the stage shaking hands with people who aren't there. God bless you. Man. Um, and he he's been pictured in recent days. I mean, first of all, he went to he went to Israel, um, and 
uh, many people, I, I know some people were like, oh, we butchered Shireen Abu Akhle's name, but um, it's okay. I, I laugh at some things that Joe Biden says because they're funny. Like, you know, when he says that you can sum America up in one word. America is a nation that can be defined in a single word. I was in the foot, him, uh, foot, foot, excuse me, the foothills of the Himalayas with Xi Jinping traveling with him. I guess we traveled 17,000 miles when I was vice president. I don't know that for a fact. <laughs> but, you know, we, especially with foreign names, and, you know, he has got a speech impediment. So I'm like, okay, all right, we'll let that one slide. We'll let the fact that he's he's butchered her name. I mean, I don't. I don't necessarily know how to how to um, how to pronounce many of the Middle Eastern names, but I'd give it a try. So he comes over and he doesn't say anything about the murder of Shireen Abu Akhler. In fact, he, he papers over it um, and doesn't say anything about it at all. And then goes off to Saudi Arabia and bumps fists with the guy who ordered the killing of Khashoggi. Yeah, you know. This is, isn't this the killing of the truth here, really, that, that they're trying to do with the murder of journalists? Because that's what it seemed to be. Shireen, uh, Shireen Abu Blue Eclair uh, was a, a, a Al Jazeera journalist, I think one of the first Al Jazeera journalists who was reporting from within the Palestinian territories and, you know, had a history of decades of, of documenting you know, war crimes. And this this went on inside Palestinian territory, didn't it, where she was shot? And there was this operation. What were the Israelis even doing there? Do we even know? You know, and why were they on other people's territory? If Russia had shot an American journalist in Ukraine, there'd be hell to pay for, wouldn't there? Yes. Well, they'll just make excuses. That, um, they spent ages saying it was a Palestinian bullet. They had no need to be there. They were obviously following her about, but the, the first, when the reports first came out, they were going, it's Palestinian that's done it, it's Palestinian that's shot them. But um, there were no Palestinians anywhere near her, apart from the other journalists. And um, after, I think it was one of the American news agencies actually proper looked into it, and it's not something they're very good at, but they actually did a proper good report and pointed out angles and, where the Israelis were in comparison to where the journalists were stood. And if they were accidentally shooting someone, you'd expect there to be stray bullets. But where she was stood, there was a tree. And the tree has several bullet marks, scuffs in it. None around it, just near the tree where she was stood. So th these aren't stray bullets because they were all striking um, points right next to Shireen. Um, that, that you can't accidentally shoot someone with a sniper rifle. You have precise sight. You are deliberately targeting someone if you're using a sniper rifle. And they can uh, uh, give us all the protestations they like. You can't overlook the fact that if you're trained to use a sniper rifle, you don't make mistakes. You don't miss. No, you don't. And, uh, you know, I've seen videos of, of IDF snipers laughing when they've shot somebody and laughing. Oh, look at his leg flied up in the air. And we know of other we, we know of other medics, for instance, that have been shot with sniper rifles. And, you know, according I'm just I've just looked at looked up because I've forgotten the number. But this is this is. Israel is accused of, re of regularly targeting journalists. This is in Le Monde today, actually. Yeah. Um, according to Reporters Without Borders, 35 journalists have been killed while working in Israel and the occupied Palestinian territories since the year 2000. The Israel army has never acknowledged any responsibility for ever, any of them. And that seems to be just the, 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 the modus operandi, doesn't it? Just deflect yeah. and, and deny and deflect and, and muddy the waters. But if the, if the tactic has worked for so many decades, why change it now? And they've um, convinced so many people that they're the innocent party in this, that um, if anybody tries to say anything against it, everybody doesn't understand because they've been told another thing. The whole world of journalism on the outside of Palestine 
has no real comprehension of what journalists are dealing with within Palestine. And um, you said about them trying to kill the truth. The fact is they can't kill the truth. They can kill the journalist, but there will be more following that journalist to carry on spreading the truth. And it's not just journalists. Unless they're going to round us all up, they're going to struggle to keep this under wraps. It's not going to go away. Don't give them any ideas, Helen. They might round us all up. They really might. Don't give them ideas. Um, what's, um, do you think it's a case of, in the media, them being pro-Zionist? Or do you think it's a case of, in the media, these reporters knowing that if they talk... Because the, the reporters and the journalists in this country, they all come... The, the ones who are, who are in the mainstream, so to speak, they all come from the same background, don't they? None of them are working class. None of them... They all come from the same background. They all went to the same schools. They all had the same sort of parents. They all came from the same class of people they're different colors yeah in the media now there's you, you you know black people and white people all reporting it but they all come from the same background and because they all come from the same background they've all obviously been brought up the same way and heard the same things from the same people and if they're brought up see i'm, I'm trying to push back on on them being pro-zionist here and zionist i'm trying to I'm trying to be fair for them but if they're brought up knowing that you don't talk about that and if you talk about that, that you're pushed to the outskirts of society, then that sort of, you know, that basically means that the people in our media have been trained to look the other way in the face of these crimes, doesn't it? Yeah. The freedom of the press doesn't exist. It is a controlled press. Um, that, like I said, the BBC aren't even allowed to utter the word Palestine. They can say occupied Israel but they can't say Palestine. That is one word the BBC aren't allowed to use. Why not? And BBC, because they're frightened of backlash and because they aren't going to bite the hand that feeds them. But isn't yeah. that is it, isn't that them trying to kill the truth just by refusing to say Palestine? It's like if we refuse to say it long enough, eventually the whole thing will die out and everybody will forget about it. Isn't that kind of the way what they're trying to do here with it? Oh, yeah, brush it under a carpet. It doesn't exist if you don't talk about it. Um, yeah. Um, well, I mean, there is no real freedom of press. No, there's not. I mean, you know, you, you look at Biden at the moment going up fist bumping with... with uh, uh, did, by the way, did you see the recent video when... So he fist bumps with... He goes over to Saudi Arabia, Biden does, because they need oil. Yeah. Because, you know, they, they need oil because they've started this this proxy war um, <laughs> and they need oil from somewhere. And now they're having to go back cap in hand who um, to a, a country where, I mean, on the campaign trail, Biden called MBS a pariah, didn't he? Have you seen the video? No, I didn't. I'll cut it in here now. Yeah. President Biden, is Saudi Arabia still a pariah? President Biden. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, <laughs> MBS is chuckling because a, a reporter says, he's, so, uh, says to Biden loudly while they're sitting at the table, so is he still a pariah? Mr. President Biden, is it still a pariah? Is MBS still a pariah? And MBS is laughing at him. And that's the that's the, the sort of, you know, where we are now in the world. Um, they're, they're, they're laughing at, at President Biden going around here, you know, going over back to, to Saudi Arabia, cap in hand, begging for oil. And then they sent him away and didn't give him any oil. So it was a wasted visit anyway. Yeah. Um, does that sort of like, does that give you heart that this might be changing sometime soon? I think the, um, there is a, a tide of change. People are, um, I'm getting a lot more positivity to my videos and it's not just from Arabs and Palestinians. It's from people who didn't really understand the story because they've never been told it properly. It's always been Hamas this, Hamas did this, Hamas did that. And these people forget who began Hamas. Israel began Hamas to use them as a foil. 
but Hamas grew legs and Yasser Arafat was a lot brighter than they ever imagined he could be. And um, Hamas got its own um, non-Israeli people in there. Now, I'm not, I'm not gonna deny rockets have been fired. Of course they have. We, we've seen Hamas's rockets, but we've also seen Israeli rockets. And they say they do discriminate and accurate bombing campaigns. Yet the other day they blew up a pavement. So there are far fewer rockets coming from Palestine than are from Israel. But we'll blame Hamas because, you know, they're who, that's why they're there. They were designed to take the blame. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, they're, they're, they're Hamas shields. This is, you know, that's what innocent people are now in, in Palestine. They're, they're Hamas shields. You know, let's, let's, let, uh, I, I found it, I found it interesting that for years they've been using that line whenever Israel, you know, is responsible for killing an innocent person or a civilian. It's oh, Hamas were using them as shields. But when, you know, certain battalions over in Ukraine uh, hold people in a steelworks, they're not being used as human shields at all. They're being... Um, they're, they're being looked after, shall we say, in a still works by a lovely fluffy battalion that we shan't mention any any bad words about at all. Otherwise, we'll get demonetized and taken our account away on YouTube. And we wouldn't want that, would we? Um, I do find it hilarious, the hypocrisy. And obviously, but I want to touch back on Biden as well with his, you know, going around fist bumping somebody who's murdered a journalist, you know, going over to Palestine and, and, and ignoring and turning a blind eye to the murder of a Palestinian journal, a journalist, Shireen Abukla, all the while, of course, slowly murdering Julian Assange in Belmarsh prison. And, and it, I, I find it hip, I find it hip, hip Hippocratic at best that these this is the the country and this is the president that's running around the, around the world sh screaming about press freedom. It really it it really does stick in my throat. That one does. I, I think leaders are becoming impotent because if you are also handled by the same people, you can't fight back. And I'm just really glad that um, Biden really messed up by separating Judaism from Zionism, because then they had to say, yeah, they're two different things. And I say again, you need not be a Jew to be a Zionist. Whereas we've been fighting against people for so long that are saying they are the same thing, when we knew they weren't. Not all Jews want Zionism. They don't all like it. There are rabbis all over the world going, we are not Zionists. We are just Jews. We, we don't subscribe to this. And then at the, at the same time, Israel going, but you are the same thing. Um, trying to control uh, rhetoric globally. The, um, you, you, it's, it's interesting you say that, you know, that how they've tried to make it so anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism. You can see that there, there's been a, a clear... Uh, attempt for that to be made and if they are if, if people like Biden are moving away from that and it is it isn't just a mistake it is actually something he's been told to do then that's good isn't it because that means obviously you you mentioning uh, I asked you whether there was um, any hope for change the thing that really how really gives me hope is the amount of people that protest now around the world especially last year there were millions and millions of people you know i was on one march in london where there were two hundred thousand people easily and it was ignored in the media in fact all they did was focus on four idiots in a car shouting you know anti-jewish stuff the other side of london they ignored the two hundred thousand people who were in hyde park and who where there was no trouble at all who were pro-Palestinian? Um, that that if if they are trying to now detach, is is this why um, certain politicians um, were up in arms and certain people were up in arms when the Labour Party refused to take on the IHRA's full definition of anti-Semitism? Because if you remember at the time. Margaret Hodge called Jeremy Corbyn a racist anti-Semite because Corbyn supported a motion in Labour 
that was passed by their NEC that left out criticism of Israel as anti-Semitic and left out calling Israel a racist endeavor anti-Semitic. And obviously that flies in the face of that if they were trying to, if, if you know, they're trying to paint anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism with the same brush. Do you think that they're, they're moving back from that now? I don't think they're going to have a choice now, Biden said it out loud. But um, it's... Oh, what's I don't know, it's he's shaking to... hands with people who aren't there. <laughs> they, they, they really could just make that, you know? He definitely has issues. And um, going back to um, when he, he was mispronouncing, uh, mispronouncing things, um, he, the only issue I had there was that he spent years practicing to talk to overcome his impediment and couldn't spend a few weeks practicing to say one word that's with, okay uh, yeah that's a fair that's a fair i mean i, I listen i've 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 made fun of him over the past you know year or two because you just have to you just have to look at, at the way biden represents presents himself and the, how he's really struggling and just think if that was a republican if that was any Republican, I mean, let's not even say if it was Trump, but if it was any Republican, they would be screaming about him, him, you know, not having his, his faculties and, and trying to get him removed as president. But for some reason, because it's a Democrat, then the media are just are not talking about it at all. I mean, this is somebody who's barely... I, I said to my mate Steve the other day, I don't think he even gets a choice as to what ice cream he has. No. Um, I, I think um, he has IA handlers. Yeah, he's obviously been moved around by by people and he's not He's not, but then you know, do you think Boris Johnson was really in control of this country? Like the, the guy's a buffoon. The, 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 um, there's Tory and Labour friends of Israel. And they have far too many abilities to um, call shots. And that, that's the same in America. And we've got big issues in both nations in that Britain now is becoming very similar to America. It's going to be a two party system very soon because everybody ignores the others and leaving us no choice between the devil and the deep blue sea. Because that's all America's got. And you don't hear about the other parties here in Britain anymore. You don't hear about the Greens or the Liberals. You, you just hear about Labour and you hear about the Conservatives. And that gives the impression to the country they only have two things to choose from. Um, that is the issue. There are no shades of grey. It's this or it's that. And there's no other choice. And people aren't shown the other choices anymore. I mean, we're literally in a point where we're watching a Tory leadership um, discussions on TV that we have no control over. It makes no sense to show us this because we can't do anything. Um, that, that those sort of debate things wind me up because there's only few people that have any chance of getting into the positions they get into. Um, Jeremy Corbyn's not your basic working class man, but he is a man of people and politics is of the people, not of the richest people in the world of everyone and there is no democracy anymore it's all very controlled and it's all very done behind the scenes and we don't see it yeah of course i mean you mentioned the politicians there you, you mentioned the conservative and the labor friends of israel mm. um i'm going to be talking to somebody on sunday about a certain labor politician but so i won't mention it here but um I, the i do i do find it interesting that whenever a journalist is murdered in Ukraine or whenever there's a supposed war crime in Ukraine or uh, a supposed crime against humanity such as the blockading of of the wheat uh, and refusing to let Ukraine export wheat by Russia they call that a crime against humanity and rightly so by the way these are crimes against humanity and if there are war crimes going over there then that's despicable war is hell we know this but these politicians who and and journalists as well who were screaming about the Ukraine war at the moment first of all they haven't said a peep, these, most of these people, about the war in Yemen. 
that has been waged for the last seven, eight years, the largest humanitarian crisis on the planet. You know, these, these same people are silent about that. And obviously we support that. We are arming the planes. We sell Saudi Arabia the planes and we sell them the bombs and we arm them and we train the pilots over here and we send a plane off with parts to, you know, uh, maintain the planes that are going around and have been for seven or eight years committing a genocide in Yemen. And we back that and we know that war crimes are going on there and we still send them the weapons and the planes and train the pilots. This is Saudi Arabia we are talking about here that Britain, the UK supports, which means our politicians have not done a damn thing about. And that's just the Yemen thing. Then we come to Israel. My point with Israel has never been about anti-Jews or anything like that. But to be honest, whatever religion you've got, whether you believe, it's up to you. It really is. I've got, I, as long as you're not infringing on other people's rights, you you have have your fun, you know, believe in whatever you want. But if you're going to be against war crimes and you're going to be against crimes against humanity, then you need to be, you need to be aware that you need to be against those things everywhere. Yeah. And being against crimes against humanity, which is what I am in Israel, I'm against crimes against humanity and I'm against war crimes, which are going on there. That is not racist. No, it's not. Do you know what is racist, Helen? Do you know what is racist? Go on. Apartheid. Yes. Do you know what is a crime against humanity, Helen? Apartheid. Yeah. And these politicians and these journalists who have been silent on these crimes and don't talk about them and won't even mention Palestine on the news right now are all lining up one after another and have been for months writing article after article and giving new segments after new segments on supposed war crimes and crimes against humanity that have been going on in Ukraine. Isn't this just all a load of bullshit really by them? Because they're not against crimes against humanity and they don't care about war crimes really, because if they were, they would care about them everywhere. They are giant hypocrites, the lot of them, aren't they? Yeah, it's a distraction technique, isn't it? Look over there while we do this over there. Um, concentrate on these white people getting hurt. Don't worry about the brown ones, which is all I can see is a degree of racism where these blonde haired blue eyed Ukrainians are in a terrible state and we must get them safe and the refugees must be brought here and we'll give you money to look after them. Yet for centuries we've balked at other refugees that we have displaced ourselves. So when, when they're there um, from North Africa or, or or the Levant, or any of those, the um, Vietnamese boat people. And I grew up in Dover, and that's where the refugees come to. And our town has never, ever rejected anybody. Yet as soon as the news is talking about refugees, they're all migrants, and they're all a problem because they're brown. So we displace people, and then we go, hmm, don't worry about them. I, I do find it, um, you, you mentioning that, 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 that a lot of the migrants are brown. There's a reason for that. Yeah. It's because for the last two decades, we, along with America, have been bombing the crap out of their countries. These people coming, you know, who are trying to get uh, here. Can be, and, and by the way, you can't blame people from, you know, they're coming from Syria. They're coming from Yemen. They're coming from uh, I Iran. They're coming from, you know, Somalia. They're coming from these places that we are helping bomb with America. And we are displacing all these people. Turkey alone have got four million refugees in camps in, in their, in, in, you know, that the Turkey are looking after. You know, and this is all because of the war on terror, supposedly, and the Patriot Act and the UK being America's little bitch and going along with everything that America wants, because that's what we always do. We're creating these refugees and then denying them 
and then demonizing them and and as if they're the enemy when they come to our shores saying can we come in i mean you know where's the one place you're not going to be a victim of uk foreign policy the uk you know so if we want to i keep saying to people if you're anti-migrant if you're anti you know migrants coming anti-refugees come to this country then you should be anti-war because if you're not you're basically pro creating migrants and you can't then be uh, you know shocked when they turn up on your border saying can you can we come in and help uh, and can you help us please yeah exactly and and the whole war on terror the whole new bout of islamophobia came from israel benjamin netanyahu told bush and blair that saddam hussein was constructing weapons of mass destruction now we all know in hindsight that was a big old lie came from the same source as a lot of the problems that have followed since the Iraq war. So it, it was it was a big old lie <coughs> told by Israel that then drew in the Americans and us into wars that were unnecessary. I don't dis disagree with Saddam Hussein not having the greatest behaviours, especially in um, light of the Kurds and the people he killed there, but they shouldn't have killed him for weapons of mass destruction that didn't exist, because what they mostly found was large amounts of gold, which never has come back to Iraq. Isn't that strange? And you mentioned Netanyahu there and he, yeah. him giving false information about the weapons of mass destruction. He also fed some false information to Trump about Iran enriching, um, you know, and getting on their way to a nuclear program. And well, that made Trump leave the JCPOA which is what uh, Israel and uh, Netanyahu wanted. And then lo and behold, just a few days ago, what do I, I think it was yesterday, what do I see? Netanyahu is meeting with Preeti Patel, somebody who had 14 secret meetings with Israelis, uh, including a meeting with Netanyahu while she was supposedly on a family holiday in Israel. Mm. Stinks, doesn't it, mate? Uh, I, I don't trust Pretty. She's whitewashed herself and... She doesn't realise she's going to be a patsy at the end of the day. Her compliance with um, Israel is them using her and she, doesn't, she really can't see it. She is just another brown girl. But she's a useful brown girl because she's the mouthpiece. So she is, you know, smoothing her way around there. But um, as soon as they're bored of her, she will get dropped. And she won't get a nice little free holidays to Israel. And that goes on the same lines that musicians are offered free trips to Israel. I heard they, about this. If they promise to um, uh, say lovely things about Israel and Zionism. So you can, if you're like a prominent, if you're, a, 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 I don't know, if you've got a TikToker with it and you've, you've got a large, or anybody with a large audience, I suppose, yeah. they're offering them, like for, if you come to Israel, you can have a free holiday and just as long yeah. as you tweet nice stuff out about us. Do a couple of concerts, we'll put you up, we'll <clears> talk, <throat> you, we'll feed you and smooth you. And you How do we know about this? What who were who were they offering it to? Well, I can tell you Maroon 5 already went over there on their free little jaunt. Um which I did point out at the time. She won't be loved. No, she won't. Not anymore, no, Maroon 5. She's not going to no, be loved they anymore. Be, they were already a bit dodgy. Their lyrics were really rather um, rapey. But, um, <laughs> yeah, they, they, they went over there. And look at us, we're in Israel. Isn't it wonderful? Look at Israel. And also, I've noticed a lot of adverts on YouTube for Israel. Me where too. they go, come to Tel Aviv, come to Jerusalem. It's not Me culture. too. That's one of the reasons why I, I turned off my adverts on, on oh, it's because I did, I just, well, I mean, I was having to jump through hoops anyway to get like 40 quid in advertisement a month or whatever it was, yeah. you know, most of the stuff that I was putting out was demonetized anyway. And then I was watching something that I was doing or the missus was watching something and, you know, lo and behold, every five minutes, and he, an advert for visiting Israel came on. I just thought, sod this. So I just turned off. The, you know, yeah. that was probably about two years ago. Um, I'm wondering if this is um, a, um, like, you know, you get targeted, ad targeted advertising on uh, Facebook and yeah, run that. I'm wondering if 
we're getting targeted advertising through YouTube as well. Well, for sure, is the uh, is the in my opinion for sure, um, and because I do see it on a lot of other independent media channels as well. I was watching, I think Jimmy Dore the other week, and an advert came on for Israel, and there's no way that he would be happy about that. Um, uh, and to 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 stop that appearing on your channel is not a, an easy thing to do. You've got to go into your Google account and all sorts, and, and yeah. you can be, be really technical about it. Um, I've forgotten what I did. The, the um, I've forgotten the the thread I was going to pull on. Then um, I hate it when that happens. Yeah, I, on, I've noticed on TikTok. The only brand deals I've been offered, and I'm a small creator, so I was quite surprised to get offered any, <coughs> um, were from L'Oreal, who are included on the BDS list, and Waitrose, who are part of the John Lewis group, who are also on the BDS list, and Marks and Spencers. Do you do, do you follow that um, I, I, like religiously? The the BD. Where did you get this BDS list from? Is it is it like? You can find it. You can yeah, I've, it. I've shown pictures of it on my channel. If I've, I'll, I'll stick it over here. If, it, but it's really difficult to get away from all of the people on that list, isn't it? Yeah. Well, the the, the best way to do it is to say pick six because you're never going to be able to do all of them. You will be tripping over yourselves trying to shop. Yeah. It's impossible. But if you choose a few, if we mess up, just say six companies we can then move on to the next six. So if we just concentrate on a group for ourselves, choose a group that you don't want to have anything to do with, the ones that bring in the most money will probably be good, like Coca-Cola, um, Seven Up, they all come under the same family, don't they? Um, dates, the easiest one to do is dates, because it will say on the packaging, product, product of. Right. I will only sell Tunisian dates. And I'm so surprised to find a little village stores avoiding Israeli dates. Yeah, it's going to come from it's going to come from the bottom up. This is if there's going to be change, it's going to come from the bottom up and it's going to be people power that 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 change. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to get you on, because it's people like yourselves who are spreading the truth about you know what is going on over there. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, I I need to reiterate that being anti- Israel, uh, being anti-Israel or being anti-Zionist and pointing out Israel's war crimes and crimes against humanity, which they are involved in, there's no doubt, is not racist. And no, it's, it's also, not only is it not racist, it's also the right thing to do. If you're pointing out war crimes anywhere in the world, you should be pointing them out in an apartheid state. And that's, yeah. for me... For the longest time, Helen, I've, I've, I've struggled for years, the last few years, since I've been doing this, I've struggled with my mental health as a result of, of what I've been covering. And the reason is this, because I'm so angry at what we have allowed happen. I, I, I grew up so proud of my country and, uh, you know, with stories of World War II heroic, uh, heroicism that saved us from the Nazis. And since I've started doing this over the last five years, I've started to realize that we're the bad guys. We really are. And I, I realize that I'm, I'm criticizing, I'm criticizing the, the British state from the very blanket of security that each provides me. You know, I understand that there's a, there's a level of hypocrisy here, but it's made me so angry. And as a result of that anger, it is, it's hurt my mental health. And I can understand why in the last few years, mental health problems have just, just shot through the roof. It's because we are looking at war crimes happen with, a, with our very eyes on the internet happening over there in Israel and nobody in our media and nobody in our parliament or politicians will call it out. And it makes me so angry that they're allowed to do this in our name. And other people around the world are going, to be, are going to be slamming us Brits for allowing this to happen. When the fact of the matter is, if we knew it was going on, we wouldn't allow it to happen. The people who are responsible for this, I think, are our media and our politicians. Because they, for too long, 
have been quiet. And it does make me wonder, this is the point I want to, well, this is the thing I want to ask you. Do, you. do you think that a lot of what we let Israel get away with and what we don't talk about with America, especially as well, and we know how they support Israel, is because of blackmail. And, you know, I don't know how much you know about the Ghislaine Maxwell thing, but Ghislaine, Ghislaine Maxwell, she was, she was Maxwell's, you know, she was Robert Maxwell's favourite child, apparently. The boat yeah. he fell off in the Mediterranean. He fell off that boat, of course. He wasn't yeah. murdered by Mossad at all. But no, he fell off like that boat. It was called the Lady Ghislaine. That's how much he loved it. And now she was the high of some trafficking ring. And none of those giving young girls to, to politicians and bankers and people who were high up in certain areas. But while she gets prosecuted, none of those other people that she trafficked those people to were profit prosecuted at all. We And they know who they are. They've got the tapes. So it does make me wonder, are they allowed to get away with this because they are blackmailing other countries and other politicians from opening their mouths and talking about it? I, I That is my opinion too. Um, the Robert Maxwell story, from what I've gathered, which is bits and bobs, and my brain fog will probably mess this up, but um, he ended up being a double agent for the UK and Mossad, so um, MI5 and Mossad, and he got found out. Whether he died anywhere near his yacht is neither here nor there. He died. Ghislaine is also on the same payroll as Jeff Jeffrey Epstein was. Again, they're useful. They are they are a ways to a means. If we can get these two people to gather up enough influential people that, that would um, would crash like that no, got it um, if they can gather up enough influential people that they can get on side and then control and they figured out who the um, most likely to want to be around minors are um, then um, all the better who can we bribe next mm. um, I, I also think the, the fact we certain pedophiles haven't been outed until after their death to me suggests that they were part of that same thing and i mean like um Cyril smith and uh jimmy savile we didn't deal with them till after they were dead so they were pretty high up in this because if they had done anything while they were alive they could have opened their mouths these are they weren't the sort of people that would have kept quiet they, um, the Cyril Smith thing is, it's, it's funny you mentioned Cyril Smith. There's obviously Jimmy Savile as well, and Jimmy Savile, um, well, I mean, he used to write letters to Prince Charles and back and forth, and Margaret Thatcher pushed for him to be Sir Jimmy Savile multiple, oh, multiple times. You know, they were loved. And, but, I mean, my mum knew, knew he was a nonce. She yeah. knew he was. My mum used to say, look at the way he's grabbing that girl. Look at him. Look at him, he's a, he's a nonce, yeah. you know, and she knew, and you know, the Mrs. Dad, he said the same thing. Oh, I used to always say the same thing about him as well. You could tell the way he was touching those kids the way he was. So everybody around him obviously must have, must have shut up. Right, um, yeah, I, I, I couldn't stand Jimmy Savile. He crept me out as a child, I'm in my fifties. It was peak TV for my age group. Um, yeah, I mean, it, I think it was um, Colleen Nolan, that really pointed out what he was like. His, her sister stopped her going on top of the pops because of Jimmy Savile. So, I mean, you know, pe people knew, high up people knew that these people were paedophiles. They must have. So there must have been people who were just turning a blind eye to it and not saying anything because they knew that if they turned a blind eye and they didn't say anything, then they'd be all right. But if they'd well, said something, they'd be maybe lose their job, etc. The same thing's going on now. Just with lives. Israel instead of a person, isn't it? Yeah, but I mean, uh, uh, the Jill Dando thing, she knew all about it. She was about to burst the bubble and then she's dead. I find it interesting that you bring that up because I've heard a few people um, 
talk about that and talk about that she was um there are rumors that she was about to go public with uh, what she knew she had lots of evidence of of paedophile rings in in high up places in the uk and she was murdered and there's i've heard a rumor i don't know how much i i shouldn't really i shouldn't really <laughs> say this because it is only a rumor and i've not seen anything to back it up but it would make me but uh, there's 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 a rumor i've heard that princess diana was going to take on the palestinian cause yes there was talk of her um having an impending trip and um that was just before the paris incident It is worrying that this is that it's so ingrained in, in society. This is listen. I don't want to take up too much of your time, Helen, but I, I wanted to I wanted to touch with you and and, and sort of get you on and, and talk to you. And if you don't mind, I'd love you to come on and have another podcast. Maybe when we're not things are not so chaotic and I'm not having deliveries and you're not having <laughs> your phone go uh, lose charge and everything. Yeah, um, no, I, mean, I, I charged it up and this thing just rushes, so I'll use the other phone next time. I think because it holds a charge better. So you're on TikTok, what is it called? H is History Hunting, is it? Yeah, um, the, my main is HHH Part Der, which is easier to search. It's, it's fewer letters. And my um, backup is HHH Part Trois. Well, I'll leave, I'll leave the link to them below this video so anybody watching can go over and subscribe to you. Please come on again and talk to me. Oh, I will you know, when, when, when we've, when, we've um, when, we, when things are not being interrupted so much and we'll be able to talk more. Thanks so much for your time and I really appreciate and support what you're doing. It's really important that, you know, uh, that the truth is, uh, it keeps getting spread out there, especially in the environment we are where, you know, people who are spreading the, the, the truth are being attacked in, in the way you are and losing your account, et cetera. It's really just such a shame that that's happening. It is. Oh, but thank you for having me on and um, I enjoyed it actually. I was so nervous, but it, I, mean, I know I, I I know you were nervous. That's why I wanted to keep it down for an hour. But um, please come on again, and and we'll talk some more. Thanks very okay. much, Helen. Thank you.